Bizarre Creations began its run of excellent driving games on the Dreamcast, where it released Metropolis Street Racer, the first ever racer to use its now standard Kudo system. It was a brutal game, where finishing first didn't mean a thing unless you did it with style. Over the years, Bizarre has cooled on the punishment and honed the Kudos experience across three installments of Project Gotham Racing. The fourth is finally ready for the starting grid, but does it take the checkered flag or spin out? It may be time to accept that the realistic racing game has finally hit a wall where design is concerned. In Project Gotham 4, you get the self-explanatory time attack and custom matches, and the arcade option is a ladder of 10 events that you have to complete under a variety of different conditions, for a total of 12 different medals per event. Half require you to use a vehicle to complete them, and the other half require the use of a motorcycle. That's right, motorcycles have been added to the mix, in addition to just about any other vehicular machine you can dream of. This is definitely one of the strong suits of Project Gotham Racing 4, the sheer variety of vehicles available. Not only do you get to rip around the tracks in NOS-boosted import tuners, but there are also F1 cars from decades ago, luxury Mercedes and BMWs, exotics to die for, and gas-guzzling muscle cars from the 70s. Only Gran Turismo can compete with PGR4 in this area, and while body parts don't fly off the cars, you can count on some cracked windshields and some paint swapping. Where you'll spend the most time is in the Gotham career option. You begin by creating a male or female driver, selecting their country of origin, and then tricking out their leathers and helmet. From here, it's the same old song and dance we've grown accustomed to. You complete series after series of racing events strewn across a calendar, and your rank gradually rises with the goal of becoming the number one driver in the world. Events come in two types, majors and invitationals. The majors are Grand Prix style events, where you complete a series of races in the hopes of topping the leaderboard when the final finish line has been crossed. The Invitationals are one-off affairs where victory rewards you with a new vehicle. Should you fail or take a pass, you'll have to wait until next year to try them again. We have to hand it to the developers here. They've come up with just about every conceivable way to race around a track. There are checkpoint races, cone races, events where you have to drive like a maniac and earn kudos, knockout events, you name it. Even so, considering how long it takes to reach the pinnacle, the events do eventually become routine. Placing rewards you with kudos in addition to the ones you earn for drifting, spinning out, nailing a turn, or otherwise driving like a bat out of hell. Those kudos can then be spent to unlock vehicles, tracks, and other goodies. Online, the game continues to pile on the options. In addition to ranked championships that utilize true skill ratings to make sure you're not lining up against Mario and Freddy when you're first getting started, you can then save your favorite videos or snap some photos and share them with other players who can then rate them. You can also save ghost data from your best runs and allow friends to try and best them. And of course, you can always check the leaderboards to see where you stand on an international level. Tracks are strewn all across the planet in nine different locations. From the neon-glazed pavement of Las Vegas to the rain-soaked tarmac of England, there's no shortage of locales to lay down some rubber. Many racing games try to straddle the line between sim and arcade, but few succeed. Project Gotham Racing 4 is an exception, mostly because it makes the sacrifices in most of the right places. There's no tuning in this game, meaning you can forget about setting the camber or adjusting the carburetor for extra horsepower. With every car in the game, what you see is what you get. There are seven different vehicle classes rated in five categories, including the typical top speed, acceleration, braking, drift, and grip. You definitely feel the difference between each car, whether it's how much they spin out when you drop the hammer or how quickly they stop when the brakes are applied, you really feel the weight and inertia of each ride. There are a couple of complaints, however. While the motorcycles are fun to ride and easy to handle, the game treats them as if they weigh five tons. Knocking a rider off a bike takes far more effort than it should. We understand that it's to balance the game, but it could have been done in a much more realistic way. There are three difficulty settings, but the easy setting is a joke, and the normal setting is just a touch too challenging. There's no adjustment to be made to remedy this, and most players will find themselves either breezing through the game or getting their tailpipes handed to them. Regardless of which difficulty setting you choose, the key to success is getting the lead and then holding it. If you haven't made it inside the top three by the time the third turn comes rumbling along, your chances of winning the race are slim. It's extremely difficult to make up ground in PGR4 thanks to some truly aggressive AI. Computer drivers will slide over to cut off the pass and play rough in the corners. Weather has a huge effect on how the cars handle, with fog being the largest deterrent to success. Not being able to see an upcoming corner can make you tentative. 
and Tentative and PGR4 don't mix. Niggling complaints aside, this is one of those games where you eventually get into the zone, and things will become easier. It can take a while to get there, so we recommend a four-day test drive to figure out if it's something you can deal with. The cars in Forza 2 are constructed with exacting detail, but the barren tracks leave a lot to be desired. In PGR4, you get the best of both worlds. The vehicles look great, and the tracks look even better. One trip around the Shinjuku Loop, and anyone who's ever been to Tokyo will immediately recognize tons of landmarks. The same goes for Vegas, London, and every other locale in the game. The off-track detail is simply stunning, considering how many polygons were budgeted to the cars. Humans that transcend the cardboard cutout litter the bleachers, and the weather effects are so convincing that you'll want to play from the cockpit view. The audio isn't quite as sharp, with some cars sounding like a two-stroke engine where the fuel mixture is a little too rich. The soundtrack is rockin', however, with some deft selections from a variety of genres. Project Gotham Racing 4 is a solid game on all fronts, but it also begs the question, just how many games of this type do we need? At this point, they all include the same feature sets, vehicles, and tracks, with minute details separating one from the other. At the same time, it does satisfy a niche of players who aren't ready to become mechanics, but want a moderate amount of realism in their games. But then, Forza 2 also managed to do this while still providing a lot more depth. BGR4 is loaded with content, and the driving is generally tight. It just fails to break any sort of new ground. Uh -huh.